Hello, am I talking with Mr. Satir? Yeah, uh, uh, hi, uh, tell me who is this? Hi, I am Sana, calling from Titanic Company. Oh, uh, hi, Sana. So, yeah, uh, tell me this now. So. Profile for a developer position. Oh, okay, okay. Is it right time to take technical interview, Mr. Sadir? Uh, you mean technical interview? Yeah, uh, fine. Can we start now? Sure, sure. Yeah, we can start now. Uh, yeah. Tell me about your current project. Okay, my current project is uh, like a, it's a uh, uh, doctor lead management system. So basically, the we have a different uh, uh, from different uh, company, uh, different different departments, uh, different drug basically. So so uh, the representatives, so they will deal with the doctors directly, and uh, our robot will every month starting. So the pending things and all, it will re, uh, renew the doctor leads actually. So from the system. So there is a doctor has a states like a pending state, no appointment state, and out of station state. So so once a, a representative meet the doctor, sometimes there is no appointment for that doctor. Sometimes the doctor may out of station. Sometimes the doctor may keep the uh, our request in the pending. So, so these type of requests and all, the robot will take uh, previous month all the recording, all the, all the things, all the the requests, and it will download that request by searching like a the pending status and not appointment and out station, and there is another filter called the drug name. The drug names like a so this company they will distribute the drugs like a Dodo 650. Uh, uh, cholic acid and paracetamol this type of drugs they will handle so basically what will happen so uh, once the so once the robot will search by using the drug names as well as the uh, status so there is an appointment uh, status basically so these two filters it will apply and once it is applied so all over the uh, the mean country wide that list will come okay that list has the information like a so what when when the appointment uh, uh, scheduled and uh, so what is the targeted date for that particular drug and particular department for the doctor so these these details will come so there is a lot of records are there in the, in the downloaded excel so from that excel uh, the robot will go each and every record and take the doctor doctor information and go to the another system there is a sap system is there so it will log into the sap system and uh, it will just um, search for particular lead activity that that lead uh, lead means uh, so the one doctor information doctor for that particular drug this information is one lead so this will this will just uh, identify that lead and what it will do it will just uh, uh, re, re, re enable that one okay so basically the current status it may be a pending it may be a no appointment it may be a out of station so what it will do for the new uh, month it will renew that means renew in the sense it will update the status to the a new renew that means so basically the representatives so focus on the existing doctors where there is a renew uh, kind of thing so, so so one by one it will go uh, each and every department uh, each and every doctor and uh, it will do the uh, the same thing a renew process so basically uh, so once the renew is done everything is done uh, that will uh, basically take from uh, there, there is a, a mail list so it will send a mail once the renew is done for the those many records 
that it's uh, about the, my current project. What is the difference between thin client and thick client? Uh, you mean uh, or, or difference between uh, what? Uh, thin client and thick client. Okay, so in the RPA, there is a two types of uh, clients: a thin client and thick client. A thin client is basically a uh, it is a, so wherever we are not able to, it, it's a very difficult to identify the elements in the screen. It is a, cannot identify directly the properties. That is a thin client. So basically, the uh, examples are like a. Um, Citrix mission and VMware mission. So this is called thin client. So where where the other thing is a thick client is a direct application. So the direct applications within the same browser basically. So same um, PC, same system, and uh, so that is a thick client. So for example, thick client is a like a MS. Uh, that mean uh, any any application, SAP application or web application. Okay, any Windows desktop applications like okay, this is a thick client. Okay, so where we can able to access easily the each and every element. Okay, that is a difference between a thin and thick client. Uh, Sana. How to publish package? Uh, you mean how to publish package? Uh, what? I am not getting it. So can you? Uh, Yes, repeat uh, the question. Uh, Sana? How to publish package or orchestrator? Okay, so how can we publish the package into the orchestrator? Yeah, so it is a, a very easy. So we can publish the uh, package from into the orchestrator by just clicking the publish button. So there is a in the studio there is a publish button is there once we click on the publish button it will pop up some um, window so there you have a orchestrator by default the orchestrator uh, radio button is checked and the another thing is a, a local custom okay you, if you want to publish the package is into your local so you can publish uh, uh, by selecting the local folder path so it will also publish as a single file called dot nougat package okay the, the extension is a dot nu gpkg and you pkg that not dot no good package okay sometimes uh, the developers will uh, publish the into the their local and they will send that uh, dot no good package to the uh the win uh uat team so uat team they uploaded their other orchestrator otherwise uh, by default so it is selected into the orchestrator it is a simple thing go, go to the ui path studio so once the everything is working fine the process package we can click on the publish button and it will available in the packages uh, session in the under orchestrator in the under orchestrator there is a uh, packages uh, uh, session uh, so in the package session it will available so we can uh, when, whenever you publish in the new versions so all the versions are available in the orchestrator packages uh, okay. okay what is value per bought in orchestrator assets okay so there is a value per bought in orchestrator assets so basically they so so if you want to for example so you have a two types of uh, three types of credentials are there so one is a uh, one credential is for the uh, dev environment another credential is for the test environment another credential is uh, is for the production environment so you can't change every time you can't create a uh, six dip different uh, username and passwords or uh, different type of uh, username and passwords right so what you can do so the same asset name you can use in the workflow if you run the same asset name uh, into the uh, production environment it will take the production credentials if you run the uh, uh, same same without changing any code uh, same asset name if you run the same thing in the UAT mission it will take the UAT uh, environment uh, uh, login and username and password for example just imagine so there is a url series that's changing so so for the dev environment you have to so for the one robot you have to take a, uh, a different url xyj xyz so for the uh, robot b you have to take a, a abc dot uh, dot com okay just imagine two different urls but the two different urls is a same kind of project same kind of home page everything is there but uh, so if you run the same project that means process into the 
but yeah it has to take the it has to open the url xyz.com if you want to run the same process into the bot b so bot b has to take uh, uh, open the url like uh, abc.com so in that case suppose uh, in such type of uh, requirement is there so then uh, we will use this a value for bot in the assets orchestrator okay in the orchestrator there is a assets once you create asset so in the bottom there is a uh, field called value per bot you can decide different value per each bot by selecting the bot per single asset name okay by using the same asset name you are able to access different values based on the robot okay that is a uh, value per bot uh, asana did you use any database automation yeah so i worked in the database uh, uh, automation so one of uh, my whole project so i worked in the one database project so where uh, we connected that database into the uh, the database is uh, called sql server database we connected to the sql server database we ran the some queries yeah i have experience in the database okay what is execute non query an execute query in database okay well yeah so there is a two types of activities in the uh, in activities panel for to deal with the database there is a execute query and execute non query so basically the execute query the output of the execute query is a data table so where if you want to write any uh, queries like a select statements okay select start from emp where the employee id equal to this one so any select any any result the data set is coming as the output from the database so then we have to use the execute query activity so it is a execute non query basically is used to update the data insert the data or delete the data so this kind of insert update delete basically we are modifying the data within the database so that kind of uh, uh, that, that kind of queries if you want to run so from the database so, so we can use a execute non query but the both we have to pass the uh, connection uh, connection objects so basically we will use the connect uh, is activity to connect the, any type of database and disconnect is activity to disconnect the um, connection between the database and the ua part yeah that's it how to set queue status okay uh, how, how how can we set the queue status you are asking right uh, am i correct how to set queue status okay okay so in the queues so if you want to set the queue status there is a set uh, transaction item uh, set uh, transaction item status is there so by using the set transaction item status so you can uh, set the transaction item status uh, basically uh, by using uh, in the queues there is a set transaction status item, uh, status activity so we can set the status is equal to success or fail so if it is a success uh, you need to uh, pass any reason but uh, if it is a fail so these are all the properties in the set transaction status so in the, if it is a fail if you fail we have to define what why it is fail so what type of exception it is so whether it is application exception you uh, because of the application exception it is fail or uh, because it's a business exception you have to mention the what type of exception it is why it is fail and also if the exception is there you have to write the reason for that also uh, into the set transaction status so so that is a uh, i mean uh, that is a, that is a, by using this activity only we can set the transaction uh, status okay uh, that is a yeah that's it uh, uh, okay what are the robot statuses the robot statuses uh, yeah the robot statuses in the orchestrator uh, you are asking the uh, robot status in orchestrator yes okay so in the robot statuses uh, in orchestrator there is a the available state busy state unresponsive state 
this connected states basically the available state means if the both are connected each other that means orchestrator and the robot connection is a well defined okay well well established and it is connected each other that is available if it is a busy state that means the robot is busy so some other process is running on the robot so that is a busy state uh, uh, the another thing is a uh, so disconnected state if the robot service so basically the robot service is not running in the that system so that is called uh, uh, disconnected state the uh, next one is uh, unresponsive so if the robot is not responding up to uh, two minutes uh, last two minutes so it is a uh, unresponsive state these are all the four states uh, uh, which is there in the orchestrator okay okay Which is best approach to store secure data like login credentials, etc. Uh, which is the best? Uh, you you are asking about the what is the best approach uh, to store the security data like uh, login credentials? Uh, okay, so uh, what is the security? What do you mean by uh, security? Uh, can you tell like uh, what is the secure data? You are saying the to store the secure data. What is the secure data? You, you like are? login credentials, etc. Okay, okay. So there is a login credential of this. Yeah, so, no. so basically, so there is a uh, the best thing is a uh, orchestrator assets. So in the orchestrator assets uh, in UI part, there is a uh, credential asset is there. So there you can store the basically the username and password. The password is uh, encrypted. Okay, so this is the best way, best approach uh, to store the security data like a login credentials, these things are uh, Other than that, you can use in the database, uh, but it is not secure. So if you want to store the credential in the database, you have to encrypt first and store in the database while you are retrieving the decrypt uh, the same password and use it. So we can use uh, that approach. Basically, the most of the people they use the uh there's a login credentials uh, i as it is there is a um credential as it is there yeah. so by using the get asset get, get a credential as it get asset credential okay so get credential activity name is get credential by using get credential you can use the uh, and uh, uh, you have to pass the asset name and it will give the username and password the password is a secure st string there's no normal string so you can't see it is a secure string you have to convert that in the secure string into the normal plain password or you can directly type by using the uh, type secure string uh, activity okay uh, type secure string activity yeah so that is a uh, so some people what they will do uh, they will do like a uh, normal windows so who who does not have a uh, basically the license of the, the orchestrator so they will do like a windows uh, credential manager okay uh, that also we can use windows thank you sadir it is nice discussion yeah thank you very much uh, sana so thank you so really it's a nice discussion have a great day yeah thanks a lot uh, sana so Okay. Uh, HR team, uh, HR team will get back to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, bye, uh, Sana. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye.